Hi friends. Today we're going to talk about osmosis. And one of the first things when I say the word osmosis I hear every single year is we should watch Osmosis Jones. And I'm going to tell you right now, never heard of Osmosis Jones. Not a bad cartoon back in the day. Good movie. But it has nothing to do with osmosis. It's just his name. That's about it. So we're going to talk about osmosis. Osmosis looks like this name. When I say osmosis, I want to make sure you can see the word. Osmosis. And what osmosis is, is quite simple. It's the diffusion of water. So it's just the movement of water. That's all osmosis is. And if we break down the word diffusion, we learned yesterday, fusion means high to low. So it's movement of water from high to low. Now, we can draw this pretty quickly and pretty easily. If I have a container here, and I separate it in the middle, and water can get through this membrane, so we say H2O can get through. But let's add a caveat. Let's add a, a qualifier or an, uh, a situation. But sugar can't. All right. So I have water levels here that are actually equal in height. But if I actually draw in the sugar particles, I drew in the sugar particles. Now, I want you to really look at this and think about it in your head. Which side has more water? Which side actually has more water? Because water can go through this membrane, so it's going to balance itself out. But what side has more? What side has less? And I'm hoping after looking at it, you realize that this side has a lot more water. Because every time you have one of these sugar particles, it's taking space up from water. There's less water here. It is currently being pushed out by all the sugar molecules. And so we have a higher concentration of water here. We'll say that this is 95% water. And we'll say this is 50% water. Well, it's simple. It's diffusion. It's a movement of high to low. So water is going to move from this side to this side. And eventually, you're going to get something along these lines, where you have a bunch of sugar. The sugar can't get through, so sugar can't diffuse. I know right now you're probably thinking, well, why, why don't they just go from this side to this side? Well, I told you, sugar can't. Sugar can't get through. This is sugar. So... It's going to stop. So we still have three on this side, a bunch on this side. But water has now evened itself out. It's the same concentration. So now we have this is 50% water. And this is 50% water. So this is osmosis. Fusion of water, high to low. Moving it across. So let's talk about what this looks like in actual cells. Okay. So I'm going to draw a couple pictures here. So first thing, I'm going to put a cell. This is my cell. Look how beautiful it is. I'm such a good artist. I'm going to put it in a little cylinder of 100% pure water. Holy cow. Pure water. Insane. And so the cell is not pure water. There are things inside the cell. We just talked about there's organelles, there's sugars, there's proteins, a bunch of stuff. So there's stuff in here. We'll say the cell, and you might know this from just like general knowledge, a cell sits anywhere between 70 and 85% water because uh, at one point in your life, you're a little kid and somebody told you you were 80% water. Well, that's not lying. That's the cell is about 80% water. 
So let's take a look here. We have 100% here, 80% here. Which way is 100 well, we always said it's going to move high to low. So the water is going to go in to the cell. So what do you think is going to happen to the cell? The cell is going to get larger. All right, let's draw another cell. Another cell here, put him in some water. He's got some particles, but so does the water. The particles are in the water. Holy crap, we put it in, we'll say, we'll put this cell in salt water. Ugh, have you ever been in salt water before? It feels so weird on your skin. So salt water here, the water is at 60% water, 40% salt. And then the cell is at 70% and we'll say 30% salt. So I'll actually put units, I'm sorry. I always forget that you guys can't think what I'm thinking in my head. So we have 70% water here, 60% water here. Okay, so which one's higher, 70 or 60? This is like the easiest math question in your life. What's higher, 70 or 60? 70 is higher. So the water is going to move out of the cell. And the cell is going to shrink. All right. That's pretty straightforward. It's nothing too crazy. Let's draw another picture. I have a cell. He's sitting at 75% H2O, 25%, I'm just going to write solute. I'm not even going to tell you what kind of solute. I'm just going to say solute. The water itself is at 75%, 25% solute. What's going to happen? Well, which one's higher, 75 or 75? Well, Mr. Rogers is the same, and that, that's the truth. So remember from diffusion, we talked about the fact that – let me see if I can find my diffusion notes. Oh, there they are. Uh, diffusion, things are always going to keep moving. Things are always moving. Even though they're equal, they're always going to keep moving. So we're going to have water go in, but since they're equal, the same amount of water is going to leave. So we draw an arrow going in and an arrow going out. Now, I wish it was this simple. I really do, but we have to add some terms here. We've got to add some terms. So let's start with the easiest one, isotonic. Isotonic is when both sides are the same. So which one of these was isotonic? This guy down here was isotonic. That's another term. Hypertonic. Hypertonic is when water leaves the cell. So which one of these pictures do I have the water leaving the cell? This guy right here. Now, there is a lot more to hypertonic and hypotonic, and we're going to talk about them tomorrow. Okay? But I just want to simplify it right now so we can make sure that we get through this. Hypertonic, water leaves the cell. Hypotonic. Water goes into the cell. So water's going to go into the cell. This is the last one. So this is that. Quick way I like to remember this, by the way, is hypo. Kind of looks like the word hippo. And so hypotonic makes hippos. 
the cell gets larger. It becomes a hippo cell. Hypertonic cell gets smaller. Not a really clever way. Isotonic, they're the same. Okay, like I said, there's more to that than this, but I just want you guys to know. One last thing I do want to talk about, because I remember it being on a quiz somewhere in our future, is remember the cell membrane has these phospholipids. And I told you guys, and I kept bringing it up over and over again through the last couple of weeks, that this membrane works really well because one side is polar, one side is nonpolar. And these guys right here are polar. And then the middle is nonpolar. We kept talking about that. Now, water is polar. If I draw a little water here. So water is polar, and he tries to get through, and he can't. He's going to bounce off. So how are these waters entering and leaving the cell? And there's a quick answer for that. There's actually these little tiny channels that are designed just for water called aquaporins. Aqua meaning water in Latin, and porin, meaning pore, like a pore, like an opening, like a channel. So water can't get through the membrane, but water can go right through this aquaporin into the cell. That's how he gets in and out. So when you're talking about water getting in and out cells, he's going through an aquaporin in the cell membrane since he can't get through it. So let's do some examples on the computer here. So let, let me actually show you like your homework tonight. So your homework was this guy. And this is classic osmosis sheet. Every single 10th grader does this sheet in the whole entire world. We all stole it from one guy. His name is Mr. Croft. Whoever he is, thank him for this sheet because it, it really does a good job of explaining everything. So we have three things we're going to do here. We're going to draw an arrow to show which way the water would be moving by osmosis. Okay. We're going to fill any missing percentages, water or solute. And we're going to identify the type of solution as isotonic, hypertonic, or hypotonic. Okay. So let me do this. Let me go to paint. I don't have Cami on this computer, so that's the issue here. And we'll go to here, and we'll, we'll actually do the first three questions together to make sure that we feel good about this. Okay, so let's get a little pencil here. So first thing, we're going to draw an arrow to show which way the water is moving by osmosis. So right here, I have 90% water, 85% water. I'm hoping that you guys see the percentages warm up and you guys realize that all percentages have to equal 100%. So if it's 90% water... Solute has to be 10%, 85% water, this has to be 15%. Anyways, so it's going to go high to low. So high, low, and draw an arrow. Boop. Water is leaving. Fill any missing percentages. Nope, no missing percentages here. I'm good. Identify the type of solution. So let's take a look. We have water leaving. Which one is water leaving the cell? That is a hypertonic. So the solution should be hypertonic. So I'll put in hypertonic. That big. It's kind of ridiculous. Let me make that smaller. There we go. What the heck? Oh, whatever. You guys get the point. It's hypertonic. This guy. So we got our trusty pencil here. We have water here, 90%, 10% solute, 40%, 60% solute. We're looking at water. So we have 90%, 40, so this is higher, so the water is going to be going in. Again, we can check on our notes just to make sure, double check. When water is going into a cell, it is hypotonic because it's making a hippo. It's making a hippo, it's making a hippo. So I, am making a hippo, so I want to do, uh, I could just write hypo. Everybody always asks me every year, can I shorten it? Do I have to write tonic every time? You don't have to. 
You can just write hyper. You write hypo. That's fine. All right, so one more. This guy right here. 80%, 75%. Well, that's not that bad. Go right in there. 80% water going in. And so water going in is hyper, hypo, or iso. Well, we can even use the last one. Water going in was hypo, so we'll just say it's hypo. Okay. I hope this is going to be easy. You're going to go through this guy. Tomorrow, you're going to get questions. Um, they're not questions. You're going to get the answers to everything. Okay. Um, shouldn't be too bad. I don't think it's anything crazy. Uh, the actual answers. I'm going to go through them in a video. And then uh, you're also tomorrow going to do a practice quiz. Now, the practice quiz doesn't count. But what's going to happen is you're going to take the practice quiz. And based on... How many answers you get right tomorrow, it's going to tell you what sheet you do next. So if you get one correct on the quiz or zero, you go to this one. If you get two to three, you go to this one. If you get four correct, you go to this one. So that's tomorrow. The rest of today, you're going to finish up this practice, and you're going to do transport drawing number two. Transport drawing number two is you're going to define as, it's a picture of osmosis. You're going to define osmosis, and you're going to picture of hypertonic, our hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic. Show the movement of water. Explain what's happening in each picture. So, again, I go to my trusty Google. I do osmosis. I want to do it in a cell. Because it's always better that way. And I got a picture right here. So, isotonic. Look, it's normal. Hypotonic, hypertonic. Tomorrow, we're going to add a little bit more. As you can see, there's different words here. Um, like this guy, we got like turgid and plasmalized and stuff like that. We'll talk about that tomorrow, but for right now, I just want you guys to draw a good picture, make sure it's a good picture of osmosis, and that's all you really need to do. So if you need any help, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.